Are you ready? I'm not trying to do no DX thing. I'm just trying to ask if you are ready for the season finale of our Jobber Radio TEW 2020 series. This is war. It's a mouthful, but this is it. This is it. We have built four months. We have worked almost, this has almost been every single week for four months building up to this point. We have four pay-per-views. We are in the month of September in our series. We're a little behind the times. We were trying to keep up and trying to be like live with the actual date. Didn't work out that way. But either way, I, I'm so proud. Uh, I, I'm so thankful. I'm so happy. I'm so, I'm just, I'm just pumped that this whole series has been awesome. Uh, you guys have been awesome. The viewers, you guys have been interactive. You guys have been telling you what you like. You've been helping us along the way because we were not good at this game. We're still not good at this game. We are still not good at this game, but we're better because of you guys and just putting in the time, just getting in the game, getting in the nitty gritty and figuring out how it works. And it's a great game. Um, it's super powerful, super in depth. Uh, if you guys haven't, if you're just watching and you haven't tried this out, you guys need to get in there. It's got a learning curve as you can see, but once you figure out, once you get into it dude, this game is amazing. Um, that's enough plug in the game. Cause I think we all know, we all know how cool the game is, how good the game is. This is our final episode of this season, season one in our TEW series. We don't have anything set in stone for when season two will begin. So you need to follow us on Twitter at Jobber Radio. We will make sure we let everybody know what's happening and we'll let you know what's happening in the off season as well. It's season as well. So make sure if you haven't already, this is the time to do it at Jobber Radio. Follow us there. Okay. Now with that said, this is a big, big episode. Not only is the season finale, these are our last pay-per-views we've built up to this. There are going to be new champions on this episode. Spoiler, there's going to be some title changes, okay? And there are going to be some major title changes from start to finish, from front to back. This is a great episode. I, I, I just can't wait to show it to you. So guess what? We're getting into it right now. Thank you so much. Please stay tuned to the end. I have a lot to say in the final, the outro to this episode. So please be sure to stay tuned for that. Uh, if you usually skip that stuff, don't skip this one. Uh, tune in. Okay. Enjoy the season finale, guys. We worked hard on it. I hope you like it. All right. I'm Jake, a.k.a. Bomber, and I am running CZW, In our pay-per-view for this episode in this month of September is Down With The Sickness. And the main event is MJF, the world champion, versus The Undertaker. Um, the other big match on the show is, of course, Ricochet versus Kenny Omega. We'll see how high of a rating we can get, but uh, that's what we're looking forward to. Uh, plus other stuff. But Warden, what are you guys doing over there in MWA? There. All right, MWA Midwest Wrestling Alliance. We have three huge title matches going down tonight. Biggest one, of course, is our uh, heavyweight championship. We got Sammy Callahan versus Brock Lesnar versus CM Punk. But that's not the only match we have. We also have an Ultimate X match tonight, Fans Bring the Weapons match, Iron Man match, and, of course, a tag team title match. A nice pay-per-view Slam is doing is Wanted Dead or Alive. We have Drew McIntyre defending his King of Slam title against Alistair. We have Sasha Banks taking on Asuka in a submission match. We have an interpromotional match with Cesaro taking on MWA's Biggie Link. Oh. We got Pac making his return as he takes on Bandito, the man who injured him. There you go. And we have a ladder crown, our first intercontinental champion. That's right. You got the six-person ladder match. That should be fun. Cool. All right. And um, at the moment we're recording this, Luke is not here. He's going to try to show up uh, later to do his show. Um we will see. We will see if time works out in his favor. But uh, his main event is John Moxley defending the Ring of Honor world title against Jay Lethal. So there you go. He's also got Randy Orton versus Edge. So we're going to see how he uh, how he has it shakedown compared to how WWE had it go down. So, all right. I say we jump right into it with our first pay-per-view. Roman Reigns. All right, this is going to be good. Drugs. Roman's Drugs. the man. Uh, most likely going to be positive. Yeah. 
backstage. He thinks that Pete Dunne has a bright future, and he Whoa. liked to put him over. Two matches willing to expire in four months. So Roman Reigns willing to put over Pete Dunne. Interesting. Yeah. He was already willing to put over Velveteen Dream. At least one person on my roster is willing to try to uh, make the company succeed, and he's willing to put people over. I like it. <laughs> All right, folks. It is time for CZW Down with the Sickness. We have three pre-show matches here. This is the first one. Kenta taking on Isaiah Swerve Scott. In a pre-show bout that had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd, Kenta defeated Sir Swerve Scott in 10 minutes via pinfall. With a Kenta combo into it's a GTS, folks. I think that's what that is. I think I don't know. I don't know for sure. Knee kick. I think that's. I don't know. Either way, Kenta gets his first win in CZW. And look at this match rating segment rating here at seventy one. Isaiah Swerve Scott didn't do that great, but you know what? His uh, one of his best matches. So I'll take that and getting Kenta a big win. So overall, good pre show match. Next up, we have a tag team death match. Death match here, folks. We have the Blood Brothers taking on OVE. Now, we can't do death matches on TV, so we're, we're holding them on the pay-per-view here. Uh, in a decent pre-show match, the Blood, the Blood Brothers defeated OVE 8 minutes, 20 seconds, when Mance Warner pinned Dave Crist with a spine buster. I'm sure it was through Light Tube Log Cabin. That's what that's what it was, a Light Tube Log Cabin. I, those death match fans know what that is. Um, of segment rating of 62, pretty solid. I'm not gonna lie, I'll take that. Um, yeah, deathmatch guys, these are all guys that are pretty accustomed to some hardcore matches, so I want to see what they could do on pay per view. Well, pre show anyway, but I like it. So, next up, the last pre show match we have Alexander Hamilton versus Jeff Cobb. Uh, decent match. Jeff Cobb, wait, it said defeated. <clears throat> what? Cobb, Cobb won. Wait, timeout. I did not select that. What? Ew. No, I did not. Put Look at Roy Agent notes. Regular kept. Oh, you strong. didn't pick anyone to win. Wait, I put, I put draw and I put a. Wait a minute. You didn't. You said match on a pinfall. Did I not save it? <laughs> I mean, what the? Fu I meant to put time a uh, double count out draw. And Jeff Cobb was pissed, but I mean, I guess I get. Okay, so. <laughs> Congratulations, Jeff Cobb, on your win. Well, I guess I didn't want to give Alexander Hamilton a loss here, but uh, I guess it just happened. So I mean, Jeff, he Cobb only had a forty-four in rank, so it's probably for the best. Yeah, well, I mean, he's start. He's he's the under guy, so he's he's got to work his way up. But um, yeah, so Jeff Cobb defeated Alexander Hamilton, folks, uh, under the ten minute mark. I against want... management's orders. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm not, I'm not going to account out. Fuck that. <laughs> um, okay, fifty three, not the best match rating, but um, it is what it is, I guess. Uh, I, well, but at least if you want to look at the plus side of things, at least Jeff Cobb's not going to be mad now. Hopefully, he got his win. Pre-show too. Yeah, I'm surprised he wanted. He was getting. Ex it said extremely upset. After a draw, so you he, caught him on a drug day. He did a lot of drugs I today. Yes, so <laughs> all right, let's get the let's get the main show going here. All right, so we have just kind of a showcase match. I wanted these guys. I think I did steal the show. Uh, yes, I did. I want to see what these guys could do here. So Switchblade Jay White taking on Matt Taven in a match that had good heat and decent wrestling. Matt Taven defeated Switchblade Jay White thirteen minutes forty five seconds via pinfall, arm trap, headlock, driver, sixty seven segment rating. So pretty decent opening to the show here. Uh, big note that Matt Taven got a win. He's so far uh, been pretty successful after teaming up with Velveteen Dream, forming the Dream Team. But <laughs> we're going to see how successful one half of that team is coming up here in just one second. But uh -oh. uh, really happy with this. Um, both guys did pretty solid performances. Got the show off to a strong start. So can't get mad at that. Damn. So here it is, the Velveteen Dream taking on Roman Reigns in a dog collar match. I was not sure how a dog collar would translate into the game, so apparently pretty good with the 82 second rating. Here's what happened. In a bout that had fantastic heat and good wrestling, Roman Reigns did defeat the Velveteen Dream in this dog collar match at 13 minutes 48 uh, seconds by pinfall when Roman Reigns choked out the Velveteen Dream. With the actual chain, so yeah, hey. Roman Reigns showing a lot of a lot of aggressive heel signs, heel tendencies here lately after coming back uh, from missing a couple weeks. 
Um, Someone either, needs to put that dog down. Uh, I guess so. 82 segment <laughs> rating, though. It's not happening on this night. Roman Reigns. Look at this. Both 78 and 64, and they got an 82. Damn. Uh, dang it. Dang That's it. been a good story. Yeah. Um, yeah. The Matt Taven dream storyline advanced. Oh, that's funny because I didn't even. Uh, well, <laughs> they're part of it, so I guess that's why, yeah, it automatically happened. But either way, uh, yeah, Roman Reigns getting a big win here on pay-per-view with an awesome, awesome segment rating. MJF <sighs> is now backstage being interviewed where he tells The Undertaker that he is not afraid of him anymore and that when the cell drops tonight, only one of them will be leaving the arena in the casket and it will be him, a.k.a. The Undertaker. Uh, MJF looks down at the CZW World Championship, and his last words are, you should know by now, the regime always have a plan. That has kind of been, you know, MJF's mantra this whole series so far. He's told Roman Reigns this, he's told Kevin Owens this, he's told everybody this, so he's now telling The Undertaker the same thing. What will that mean later on coming up tonight? Uh, Segment rating 97. Pretty decent. I think that's pretty good, right? Yeah, I'll take that. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to get one big MJF promo in on this uh, show. So uh, I, it paid off big time. Hyping that main event up. So up next, we have the big blow off between Adam Cole and Carl Anderson. And yes, Luke Gallows is standing ringside. Carl Anderson gave him the ultimatum. You have to choose either me or Adam Cole. So here's how this match went down. In a good match, Carl Anderson did defeat The number one draft pick for CZW, Adam Cole, 12 minutes by pinfall when Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson did lay Cole out with a magic killer. Anderson picked up the pin to get the victory. Guys, it happened. Yep. Uh, Adam Cole overstepped his bounds. Adam Cole overstepped his bounds. He alienated the good brothers and... Overall, this has been like a little. I've been trying to do this whole feud from day one with uh, Adam Cole trying to take over their back to the Bullet Club leader stuff, where Anderson was the leader, but Adam Cole was like the voice and kind of jump out front, and that was the whole thing that led to this match here. So, uh, it in the end, it's it screwed him over, and he got the loss. His big head got to him. But the brothers. Yes, together again. 74 segment rating. Very good match out of these two, even with Carl Anderson getting a 58. So uh, I think this is a pretty good end. Well, this is kind of the end. The next segment is the actual end. Oh. So Gallows and Anderson stood over Cole's body, two sweet in each other. Cole tried sitting up asking them why, but only got another magic killer as the answer. The good brothers are back, folks. Segment rating of 63. Yes, I, uh, I, I, for some reason, forgot to put Cole in the actual um, booking of the segment. So this probably would have been a little bit better. But um, either way, this did end the, the feud between Cole and the OC. So in the end, the Good Brothers are back. And we're going to see what they do, you know, in the future in CZW. So Hooray. and where will Cole go from here? Up next, guys, it is hair versus hair. Cody's already lost his tattoo. Dolph Ziggler is trying to finish off, you know, kind of trying to degrade Cody by making by taking his hair from him. So we're going to see if he can do it. Uh, in a bout that had great heat and good wrestling, Cody Rhodes did defeat Dolph Ziggler 13 minutes and 40 seconds. It took three crossroads to put Ziggler down, but he finally scored the pinfall victory. And yes, this whole... this. Dolph Ziggler is completely all in on this weird, I picture it more like a Texas Chainsaw, like leather face type yeah. gimmick. He's He's got skin faces coming out. He's he's going all out with it. Uh, segment rating 76. These guys put in a very good match here. Both of them did very well. Um, so that's oh, it. Guys. What's up? I was thinking more like Buffalo Bob from Silence of the Lands where he's like yeah, completely naked that. dancing <laughs> in the mirror with like a skin coat around him. Not like putting lipstick on in the mirror. <laughs> no, more leather face, uh, less less Bob. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dolph Ziggler in the dress. Yeah, yeah, not quite that far. I guess that actually kind of a pleasant name. Oh god. Uh so <laughs> so Dolph Ziggler actually loses. Uh and it's time to get his head shaved, folks. No way. After a hard-fought battle, Cody Rhodes has finally bested Ziggler, and now it's time to get his hair cut. 
Cody grabs the hair trimmers and held it up in the air, turning it on. Just then, an engine could be heard revving up, and out came that same rusty van which abducted Cody on Evolution. The van pulls up to the ring, and out of the door jumps this crazed-looking man filled with tattoos and wearing a demonic-looking mask. He hits the ring and tackles Cody. After beating Cody down for a moment, Ziggler comes to and grabs the trimmers. As Cody is held down by this deranged-looking man in a mask, Ziggler proceeds to shave his head anyway. With Cody now bald, Ziggler pointing out that Cody's lost his hair, his tattoo, and he's remo- and the man removes his mask, revealing it to be G. Raver. The crowd is not familiar with who this is, by the way, obviously. <laughs> who are you? Who are you? Exactly. <laughs> Uh, but he does look scary enough to draw a reaction. Um, I'm going to put an image up on the screen in a second for those of you who are watching this and who do not know who G Raver is. Uh, get you kind of an idea of what he was looking like here. Uh, Ziggler and G Raver right away in the rusty van, leaving Cody laying in the ring with his blonde hair sprinkled all around him. No. Uh, so, yes, earlier when he came up on Evolution, uh, on Evolution where Cody got abducted, Ziggler was not driving that van. It, pu- it came pulling up to the ring, and he jumped out of the back. G. Raver was the man driving that van, and he was driving again here tonight. Um, I think this this came off very well. 73. We got an introduction here. Let's see. Uh, he'd be penalized. Swagger for- gimmick. Swagger gimmick. That's interesting. He's a degenerate is the thing. Uh, but yes, as you can see, this guy, he's hes bald, his eyes, he's got crazy eyes filled with tattoos, and he's known to wear crazy masks. So, we have some kind of friendship here with Ziggler and G. Raver. We're going to see in the future where this goes, but uh, right now it has resulted in Cody being shaved bald and his tattoo being removed. So, there you Dude, go. Yeah, bad luck. Yep, I think that's a pretty good way to... Uh, you get this feud uh, at its peak with the debut of these two. See here. Okay, so there we go. Let's move on. Let's move on. Next up, we have a winner-take-all match. We're talking the CZW Women's Champion Charlotte Flair versus the slam, the Queen of Slam, Ronda Rousey, who will walk out with both belts here tonight. In a bout that had great heat and good wrestling, Ronda Rousey did, in fact, defeat Charlotte mm. Flair 12 minutes 50 seconds by submission when Ronda Rousey rolled out of the figure four and latched onto Charlotte's arm, almost ripping it off, forcing her to tap out. So segment rating of 74. Um, Awesome segment rating here. Awesome match between these two. I was hoping it would be. Um, Charlotte and Ronda both did very good. So there we go. Uh, The queen of slam is now the CZW women's champion. That's not good. That's not good for CZW. <laughs> yeah. okay, See, the no, crowd sorry. hates it. The crowd hates it. The babies mm-hmm. are crying. Everybody is so mad. Uh, and we're going to see where this goes here. Will Charlotte accept this fate? So as the ref is handing Ronda both the Queen of Slam championship as well as the CCW women's title, Charlotte body checks the ref out of his shoes. Charlotte scoops up both titles saying her title isn't going anywhere and she's leaving up the ramp with her belt. She refuses to give the title up. Ronda picks the mic up telling her that the rules were really simple. This is winner take all. That doesn't only mean the CZW women's title is going to slam. So is Charlotte. Charlotte stops in her tracks and looks back at Ronda who's smiling. She tells Charlotte that not only were the titles on the line, so were their contracts. Wait, what? Exactly. What? Charlotte is going to slam? Charlotte looks like she is going to throw up as Ronda's music hits. Looks and like Slam really was the winner tonight. Slam. Damn. Slam apparently has just obtained the CZW women's title and Charlotte Flair. Uh, not good night here. For CZW in the women's division and Charlotte Flair and everything. Segment rating 57. I assume it's low because the crowd's just pissed off they lost Charlotte Flair. That's what it is. 
Uh, I and need to make some deals with CZW, my God. That yeah, and Charlotte people. struggle going off for script, of course. But uh, And yes, the Ronda comes a CZW question mark. Storyline has ended with this segment. So, wow. yeah. Charlotte's gone. The CZW women's title gone to slam. Where will we go from here? Up next, we have the big three-way TLC tag team title match. The CZW tag team titles on the line. The North defending against Gorillas of Destiny and LAX. In a bout that had good heat and decent wrestling, the North defeated G.O.D. and LAX in this TLC match, 19 minutes, 30 seconds, when FTR came out to screw over the North by knocking Ethan Page off the ladder. But when he did, his ladder also knocked over the ladder that Tama and Ortiz were on. As Santana and Tonga attacked both Dax and Cash, Josh Alexander was able to climb up and sneakily pull down the CZW Tag Team titles, winning the match for the North. So, guys, all kinds of craziness happened here. Yes, FTR claimed that they were not going to let the North leave the Tag Team Champions. They tried to come out and prevent that. But when they did, they just caused a bunch of distractions. And Josh Alexander was able to pull down the titles, getting the win for the Canadians, getting the win for the North. They remain your CZW Tag Team Champions. Uh, so chaotic. Yeah. Segment rating, 73. Everybody did pretty solid. There was a little bit of uh, Tama Tonga. It was a little low with his brother there or cousin or whatever. I don't know what their relation is. We're going to say they're buddies. Adopted, adopted brother. Adopted his adopted brother. There you go. Um, so, yeah. So, I, I don't know how many people thought the titles were going to change. I assumed a lot probably were thinking that. But I think the I think the North have a little bit longer of a title run in mind here. So up next, CZW Iron Man title match following the tag team title match here in a bout that had fantastic heat and decent wrestling. Seth Rollins defeated Kevin Owens nine minutes via pinfall with the pedigree. Seth Rollins Kevin. makes defense number two of the Iron Man title. Uh, so. These guys got a 74, and when I was booking them, pre-booking them, I got the notification that said, hey, by the way, don't, did you forget Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens don't click at all? And I'm oh. like, fuck. I was like, I wonder, oh. I was like, dude, this is going to give me a bad and match rating. This is rating. not accurate to real life. True. It's but, not accurate to the segment rating. Holy shit. Yeah, they luckily really they well. still, yeah. yeah, luckily they still pulled out a good match. I was really afraid when I, because I, I forgot about that. When, it, it happened earlier, and I forgot. Um, but either way, um, they pulled out a good match, so I'm happy with it. Seth Rollins is still the champ. That train is still rolling. Both of these guys were like 4-0, and 5-0 and in recent matches, so both of them were coming in really high here. But Seth Rollins gets the clean victory as he moves closer to turning face. Uh, he's been kind of winning the fans over as of late, so uh, this win will definitely help him out in that uh, aspect. So we'll see where we go from here. So up next, we have the big highlight match. We're talking Kenny Omega versus Ricochet. Who is going to be the best wrestler in the world? We're going to find out right now. Any bout that had superb wrestling, obviously. Great heat, obviously. Ricochet defeated Whoa. Kenny Omega. 18 minutes, Whoa. 29 seconds via pitfall after a shooting star press. 83 segment rating. Obviously, great match. I was hoping to break our record. We had an 84 with Kenny Omega, and I think it was Cedric. Uh, but um, 83, obviously, I'm not going to be mad about that. I'm just, I just wanted the record. Both of these guys, 92 and 84, but still got an 83. Was this um, a regular book match? No, it was not. I tr I oh. did try something different. I did click. I did go with Epic. Okay. I did go with Epic. Interesting. And the the details were basically. Uh, you got to have people that are very high in ring performances, and both of these guys obviously were that. So I was, mm -hmm. I was hoping that would maybe bump it up to like high nineties. But uh, either way, I'm still I'm still happy with it. Eighty three, awesome awesome match between these two. But you went for the grand slam. You got a double. I yeah. Hey, got a got a ground rule double. At least the ball went over the fence. It just hit the ground right. first before right. it went over. Uh, either way, Ricochet got the big win here, putting Kenny in his place. He's been kind of a dick as of late on the show, so um, he got put in his place here. So up next, the main event. Definitely it, good. 
in the main event with the CZW World Championship on the line, champion MJF defending against The Undertaker. In an exceptional match, The Undertaker defeated MJF in a cage match, a.k.a. this is a Hell in a Cell match. Seven minutes, 58 seconds via pinfall with a choke slam. Uh, the Undertaker has won the CZW World Championship. I fucking oh knew God. it. You were right all along. The Phenom is the face of CZW and is now the world champion. MJF has been defeated in a Hell in a Cell match in the main event of Down with the Stick. This 81 segment rating, fantastic. Undertaker got a 95, MJF 83. Uh, the match had very little drama because, yeah, it was obviously giving me all kinds of warnings. You can't put Undertaker in a match over three minutes long. Uh, so I went with like an eight, eight minute over match. Over three? Yeah, I put him in a five minute match and it's like, oh, I don't think Undertaker can go that long. So I was like, uh, Jesus well. Christ. I was visibly tiring at the end. Yeah, eight minutes and he was visibly tiring at the end. So either way, well, it doesn't congratulations matter. Congratulations to the, uh, the 55 year old wrestler defeating the young up and comer. You got time. that right. <laughs> we're putting the we're putting the button. You see this segment rating? This is because of this guy right here. Yeah, this guy helped out a little bit. He was there. This is a awesome main event. I'm happy with this. So I'm so happy with this. Uh, so we're gonna close the show out next. What an ending to the show, folks. We have the rest of the unwanted joining Taker in the ring here. Both Darby Allen and the demon Finn Balor entered the ring as the cell raised up into the air. The unwanted posed as a darkened purple glow fell upon the crowd as down with the sickness came to a close segment rating of 100. The first 100 segment rating, and we closed out our pay-per-view with it. I can't possibly imagine... This went could have been any better. Um, I, I like to think that they did the Charlie's Angels pose. I I would think more <laughs> it was Undertaker doing his one knee, and then I don't know what the fuck Demon's doing his Demon pose. Ballard, Ballard does his arm stretch thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. Yeah. It's it's basically you know Derby Allen grinded the ropes with the skateboard. Yeah, he's basically holding the skateboard in the air and like <laughs> I don't know doing skateboarder stuff. It shows the spikes underneath. Yeah, uh, so that's it, guys. That's the close to CZW Down with the Sickness. Let's see what we got. There, there it is. is. That Folks, is not bad at all. I, I It is not bad at all. You are right. 84 show rating. I I can't. I, you can, I don't know if you can hear the smile on my face, but it's there. Um, we went with a really big show here. We had uh, three pre-show matches, and we had a bunch of stuff in between. There were some really big ones. MJF. Promo. We got a hundred. First hundred. Eighty three. Eighty one. There's a couple of stinkers in there a little bit, but all the matches were good. The the only weak points were the segments. The yeah. weakest match was uh, sixty seven on the main show. So, uh, I guys, time for some speeches. Yeah, he was in a good match. Okay, that makes sense. Could have done better. You know what? Charlotte's on her way out. I'm gonna give her a good little send off. Last lap. Hey, yeah. Have a good one. I'm gonna give her. I'm gonna give her. Should I do the hug Redesign. for the first time? Oh, hug, yeah. hug, I think hug, she's hug, earned a hug. 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 The hug. Do the hug spot. Told they're worthless. Okay, here we go. Hey. Told they're hey, worthless. Charlotte Flair, what? you fucking bitch. <laughs> Make speech. MJF Wait, is pleased. You did it. Isaiah Swerve Scott is pleased. Shauna didn't. Oh, Shauna. <laughs> Uh, Charlotte didn't seem too concerned with your speech, at least for now. Well, guess what? You are worthless. You you betray- you couldn't win. What the fuck? She couldn't win, and now we lost our women's title, and we lost her. This is she is worthless uh, to us. Jesus. Okay. To start off, death before dishonor. Kylie Ray defeats Tainara Conti in ten minutes with the crossface. Um, forty segment rating. Nothing special. This was Conti's debut, and Ray hasn't been on TV in a while. Um, and nothing major about that, I guess. Yeah. Oh, man. It said in the bout that had terrible wrestling. That's never good. Yeah, non-existent crowd. And then backstage, we cut to a segment with Ricky Starks going up to Akira Tozawa, making fun of him for having not won a one-on-one match yet. No, he's being stuck in the pre-show. 
He then slaps Tozawa around before Tozawa has enough and slaps him back. Akira then challenges him to a match on the main card, which Dark accepts. Oh, okay. Um, 53 rating. Starks improvise well. Tozawa yeah. getting that main card match. Yeah, about time. Let's see how he does. And then he mentioned that was announced on our Twitter. Hmm? Taichi, all the way from the land of New Japan, comes over and defeats Ray Horace in 14 minutes. Um, 48 segment rating. Not good. Horace seems off his game. Hmm. Um... Yeah, that was our pre-show. Nothing really important to it. Just giving so, him a chance to show off. So Tachi's on this, uh, the loan deal from New Japan? Tai Chi. Yep. Tai Chi? Uh, yep. He's on the loan deal. Okay. For one show. I'm not familiar with him. Um, he's pretty good in New Japan. He's a current tag champ. Well, that's good he's good in New Japan because he ain't good here. Oh, jeez. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he built that had decent wrestling, but not much heat. Tozawa defeated Ricky Starks in 11 minutes wow. with the top ropes and ton. So Akira Tozawa gets his main card debut here and gets a, gets a win. Or maybe yeah, not a debut, first but at least time first time in a while. But yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. I thought that was uh, going 59, the other way. 59 rating. Starks had a 45. Um, yeah, I'm actually kind of happy with how this went. It's not good, but went a lot better than I thought it would. But after Tozawa's win... Miz and Morrison come out and beat him down. Oh. Stark smirks, nodding before he joins in in this beat down. Starks then spears Tozawa before Miz cuts a promo, announcing that they are perfection, standing over to end the segment. And wait, so so we got a it's a trio or a faction here that we're talking about, or just like tri- a this is a trio now called Perfection. Okay, mm-hmm. I was wondering, I was like. Rating. I was wondering why Miz and Morrison would come out and beat up on Tazal. I'm like, man, they're a bunch of dicks. I mean, Isn't that they, Ziggler's old theme music? I'm here to show them. Hi, yeah. I am perfection. Oh, there you go. It's basically the <laughs> same go. song. Yep. <laughs> Good rating. rating. That's awesome. Miz man. worked well with the crowd and um, getting to speak. In a decent match, David Finley defeats Kip Sabian in 13 minutes um, with a Prima knocked up at pinfall. Um... Finley is the one who seemingly answered Sabian's open challenge, and it didn't work well for Sabian. Yeah, what was the name of this open challenge again? The open challenge of perfect, or Chip not Sabian, perfect. Chip Sabian's open challenge of greatness, because he's of full greatness. himself. And he lost his own open challenge of greatness. Son yeah. of a bitch. He, he tried, but David Finley from New Japan came out and turned him up. Okay, so he is David Finley on your roster, or is he another loan? He's another loan. Gotcha. Man, Ring of Honor is getting shown up by all these loans. They're going to have to do something. Yeah, no, um, I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to see how New Japan feels about this. Starting another war here, yeah. Next up, in a good match, Dragon Lee defeats Moose by pinfall to retain the Ring of Honor Television Championship. His Eighth defense. That's impressive. I yeah, I thought I thought the way you've been booking Moose, Moose lately, I thought this was going to be Moose coming and getting the win over Dragon Lee, finally taking down your top guy. But I, I see the match was too know, short. I, Is this one that you lowered right before you started? No, I left oh, it as yeah. original. It was nineteen minutes. I guess could have gone longer. Yep. Yeah. What, yep, you need that 20 minute mark. Yeah. Yeah, gotta get that 20 minute mark. Yeah, 65, though. I mean, that's pretty, that's that's solid. That's solid. After this, we stop by commentary before a video package play showing a title design. The words coming soon displayed on the screen. Um, 59 reading. Angle got the crowd hotter. It did. Okay, so. In, okay, so is this, I mean, I guess you want us to find out later, but. Unless you do want to let us know now, is this the pure title or is this going to be something completely different? Different title. So not the pure title. Okay, gotcha. Pure. Twenty four seven I ninety five nine one one. Let's just say it's not a singular title. Let's oh, 
Okay, gotcha. Oh, the ten man title, the coveted ten man title. The I get co- you. I, dude, I want yeah, exactly. I want to see a ten man title. <laughs> Next up in a decent match, Rhea Ripley defeats Dakota Kai in seventeen minutes with a Riptide. Um, Rhea makes defense number three of the Women of Honor title. Okay, that's awesome. Um, Sixty five rating. Yeah, the Cobra, Dakota. Dakota Kai, or I said Da Cobra. Yeah, because I've been watching Cobra Kai on Netflix. By the way, that's probably it's, part it's of a great it. show. Yeah, it is. Uh, Dakota it's Kai funny. hasn't really been doing a whole lot of uh, great things lately. So to see her come out here and pull a sixty-five out with Ripley is awesome. Yeah, I know for sure. And they got great chemistry. Look at that. Of course, that is always a good thing. But Rhea is still your champion heading into our off season. What? All right, next up in a bout that have fantastic heat and decent wrestling. Randy Orton defeats Edge in 14 minutes with a RKO. Afterwards, Randy, as he gets him, rests his foot on Edge, establishing himself as the better wrestler. 40. 62 from Orton. Edge had a 46. Yeah. Could have been longer. This game is not kind uh. to Edge, that's for sure. Apparently, how was Edge can. doing so poorly? But like Taker and Kurt Angle, you know, I don't know. Maybe the the mod maker really didn't like Edge. He was not an Edge head. Maybe. Dude, the thing is, um, just gave him some low ass stamina for some. Luke. The thing is, um, Edge. This was originally set to be like 19 minutes, but it kept saying, "No, no, no, shorter, shorter." They said that but for Undertaker that too. In the long run. That's right. Yeah. Damn, Scott Armstrong. Dude, we've said it many times, man. You gotta go 20 minutes no matter what. Fair enough. True. Yeah, but other than great heat and decent wrestling, Tanahashi defeats Naito in 14 minutes by pinfall with the high fly flow. 49 rating. Yeah. Fuck. Damn. Here's another thing about this. Um, Tanahashi, it was saying, can't go that long. So I had to keep turning it down. Mm. And... That didn't He's been help, able to go for thirty. Yeah, this was probably. only fourteen. Yeah, uh, I guess he definitely couldn't go that long, especually with this uh, injury that he just got. <laughs> fractured with his cheek bone. hanging off his face. A fractured, <laughs> fractured cheekbone. That sounds super bad. That sounds like some weeks yeah. off. Yeah. But night. But Tanahashi establishes himself as a. As a force to be reckoned with going into our off season, I guess. And he's a force out. with a broken face. Yeah, exactly, they both did yeah. good. They both did well, just it's too short. Yeah. And they belt that had good heat and decent wrestling. Reed Dragon defeats the best friends to win the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships. Wow. That is our first title to change. Yeah. I. Uh, that was a shock to me. I know how much you love your best friends. I love them, but sometimes you got to do what's best for business. I guess so. I did not. Yeah, I did not see this coming. Uh, what, what about you guys? You see this coming, guys? Uh, I mean, he, he picked these guys pretty high. Red Dragon. They were Red they Dragon. Were the I after best friends, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's kind of hard not to have Red Dragon as your champions. I can understand They're that. They're some yeah. of the best. Dude, look at Bobby Fish was the worst performer out of that. That's surprising. Somehow he did worse than Chuck Taylor. I don't Chuck buy Taylor. that at all. Worse than Chuck Taylor. What? <laughs> He's worse but than with a pair that, of shoes. We have our very first title change, Ring of Honor. Oh, that's oh, your damn. first title change ever, huh? Yes, sir. Oh, I didn't know that. Meanwhile, okay. we have a TV title. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, there you go. Okay. Well, congrats to Reed yeah. Dragon. And they bounced that had fantastic heat, great wrestling. Hangman Page defeats Bray Wyatt mm. 25 minutes with a dead eye through a table and some chairs off the apron. Whoa. Wow, okay. So that was a that was a nice rating. Yeah. Wyatt had an 82. Holy crap. That's awesome. Th- 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 so was he the fiend or was he Bray Wyatt? He was just Bray Wyatt. Okay. Man, what a what a crazy sweater uh, held him back. Yeah, what a that's a great performance. I didn't expect that out of him. If it had been the fiend yeah, that long, Ants would have threw a hissy. I'm sure the fiend isn't happy with this one. No, 
Fee but needs to go he, after Bray Wyatt for that he, loss. And this ends off the feud of let him in, Hangman. Oh. Wow. He didn't even okay, beat the fiend and it's over. The longest, the longest feud we had this whole series. From start to finish. I, I respect it. I like it. Rest in peace. He avenges after the months of torment. Hangman goes to check on the fiend, you know. I mean, or Bray Wyatt, make sure he's all right. But he's nowhere to be seen. Oh. He's disappeared, and Hangman is left alone. Wow. 83 yep. rating. Big rating there. Yeah, people are like, whoa, where'd he go? Holy shit. Spooky. I don't Bray know. Wyatt people has been buried once again. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, there goes your internet fans. Yep. <laughs> there we go. The devil worshippers back at it again. Wrestling Twitter. You know it. <laughs> And in our main event, John Moxley defeats Jay Lethal to retain the Ring of Honor World Championship. It's in 28 minutes, that was nearing 29. Yeah. A 79 rating, uh, Moxley had a 91 and a 66 from Lethal. Damn. Well, I said... Match up got hotter at least. I said it'd be up to Lethal to... Step his game up. He didn't, but it didn't really matter. Yeah, 79. Yeah. Well, 66 isn't terrible or anything, but yeah. Uh, For 70, main event? 79 yeah, like yeah well, well, I, get, I understand main event. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Moxley, as usual, being our MVP. Yeah, I, I didn't realize six defense. I You've got a lot of defenses from Moxley here. He's defended on pay-per-view and on TV. Yeah, okay, well. Congrats. Should have been in CZW. Good deal. Good deal. Good deal. <laughs> Not at all. He should have stayed Get Adam Cole, man. <laughs> hey, get I did Adam get Adam Cole. Cole. I did get Adam you Cole. You use him in your main event. Okay. Yeah, he lost to Carl Anderson. <laughs> yeah, I, I had him lose to Carl Anderson. But, <laughs> of all people, Machine Gun Carl. Hey, I'm putting, nah, people, right. I'm putting people over, okay? Come on now. But either way, this, this is right. about Ring of Honor here. That's a pretty solid main event, 79. That's that's a good finish there. Yes, I think it's one of our better matches we've had. Yeah, no. That's very yeah, good. But, uh, yeah, John Moxley is I still think... your champion heading into the offseason. Boom! Or not. It was me. It's all about the main event. That's that's what, our, that's what the fans are saying. Yeah, they said uh, for Ring of Honor, the main event is weighed heavily, so... That did quite well. Your oh, solid okay. main event really b- saved the show there. Hitting, so we gained popularity everywhere, but it was limited outside of one region. Mm. But 77 overall. Um, let's see. Moxley was our best match as usual. And our best segment on the entire show was The Fiend disappearing. Yeah. And Miz and Morrison did pretty good for that. Was the third highest segment was the Miz and Morrison creating the perfection with uh, Mr. Starks. Yeah. So we end off this pay per view with only one new champion, Hangman, avenging all of his torment, and a new group joining Ring of Honor. All right. Let's see how this speech goes. All right. Moxley praised for a great performance. He's happy. I love how whenever you. Love whenever you praise Moxley, he flips you off. Yeah, and he's like, I didn't even notice. <laughs> he, he just does that to everyone. He, oh, he's yeah. At this happy. point, hopefully he heals up nicely. Tom, he can't smile though. Yeah, hopefully <laughs> Tom Hashi gets better. Yeah, that's why his smile's a bit uh, tilted. Yeah. All right, and Naito, Naito also seems pleased. All right, let's let's get a good show going for once. That is our show. All right, yeah. good deal. Seventy-seven. Welcome, everybody, boys and girls. We are finally at Onslaught in Ohio. We are in Cleveland at the Quicken Loans Arena with 20,562 people in attendance ready for this pre-show match. Mm-hmm. We have SCU2 facing Dummy Money, Inc. in a match that lasted 12 minutes, 29 seconds. Eli Drake managed to pin Christopher Daniels with a gravy train. We've seen these two teams have some beef. We intended to have a 3v3, but Rockstar Spud did get injured last week preventing that from happening wow. so we went with the uh the old 2v2 but uh each team's third member was at ringside for this match okay gotcha Makes happy sense. with the 60 pretty good for a pre-show match Dude, not yeah. bad not bad no this is Zarian really stepping up yeah dummy money really uh bringing it here they they haven't been getting too many 60s so this is good 
Stone Cold kicks off Onslaught in Ohio in the ring with MWA's champion Sammy Callahan, Lucha Bros, and Walter all in the ring. He thanks the audience for watching and thanks the champions for representing the brand and wishes them good luck in their matches tonight. Suddenly, Samoa Joe's music hits as he gets in Stone Cold's face saying he needs a match tonight. Stone Cold looks him up and down and says, You want a match? Looky here. This finger matches this one as he gives Joe the birds and proceeds to hit a Stone Cold stunner on him. The other heels just stand over him laughing. Well, shit. There we go. <laughs> well, that, I guess he just lost that match. Oh, he got his match all right. I see this. Poor Joe. Uh, first yeah. Fatu, now Joe. Man. Yeah, no, it can't beat a uh, 94 start. Pretty pretty good start. Stone Cold God, has damn. a thing against Samoan. Oh, so far he does. Racist. Well, maybe they have a problem with him. Racist. <laughs> Up next, we have the Midwest Tag Team title match between the Lucha Brothers, who are the current champions, facing Evil and Sonata. Evil comes to the ring with his leg heavily bandaged as he appears to be trying to power through the past week's attacks from SoCal Uncensored. The match finds Sonata having to do the brunt of the work until a low blow by Pentagon to Sonata forces Evil to have to step in. Mm. Things are looking bad when during a lockup with Pentagon, Phoenix chop blocks the back of Evil's leg while the ref was tending to Sonata. Pena- Pentagon goes to perform his arm breaker finisher on Evil when Evil grabs him by the face mask and manages to spin it around blinding Pentagon. Sonata gets the hot tag and immediately knocks Phoenix off the apron, hits a moonsault into Skull End on a blinded Pentagon Jr. who is forced to tap. Oh my Damn. god. Brutal. <laughs> evil may be face, but he still knows how to be evil. Wow. <laughs> so, wow, we have... uh. We have some new champs. We have new champions. Evil and Sonata are your new tag team champions. Wow. Eat shit, Randy Orton. We got New Japan guys winning titles. <laughs> he, 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 Randy Orton is rolling over in his MWA grave right now. Oh, <laughs> uh, holy shit on that segment rating. Um, yeah, 79 is awesome. Ray got an I booked 80. this as. Yes, he did. I booked this as storytelling and uh, it definitely paid off. I wonder why Evil had a 58. Because sure. obviously, Kayfabe, he was like. Hurt, but true. I wonder why he had just a straight up 58. Hmm. Uh, have any, any negatives in there? Oh, holding, holding back, back Lil Morale. I think he injured someone. Oh, hmm. huge match here as we have a fans bring the weapons match for Team MDK Nick Gage, Joey Janela, and Ricky Shane Page versus Samoan Dynasty, Jacob Fatu, Jimmy Uso, and Jay Uso. Samoan Dynasty comes out to the ring wearing tribal Samoan paint, looking ready for war, as Jacob Fatu grabs a glass coffee pot from a fan, while the Usos grab a pool cue and a cactus from another fan. Where do you even find a cactus in Ohio? <laughs> Team MDK comes driving out in the same car Ricky Shane Page used to hit Jacob Fatu last Thursday. Oh my god. He also kind of hit Nick Gage, but... Uh... <laughs> While smoking a cigarette, Joey Janela opens the trunk and takes out a can of gasoline. Holy while fuck. Nick Gage takes a fan's toys lightsaber wrapped in barbed wire, and Ricky Shane Page takes a, hold on, let me check my notes, Lionel coin bank filled with at least $200 in spare change. <laughs> this match ended in a surprising oh. twist when Samoa Joe comes out to help Dynasty. Drew Gulak smashes a bundle of light tubes, Drew Gulak, over his head. Mm-hmm. Nick Gage ends the match after hitting a choke breaker onto Jay Uso. From the top rope through a burning table, Drew Gulak raises hands with Team MDK. Um, okay, several questions here. <laughs> Same. First of all, what the fuck's a Lionel Coin Bank? I knew it. I knew you wouldn't know what that was. <laughs> what is that? It is that? A, a railroad crossing piggy bank. Okay. And the commercials would come on all the time, and it would just be young children going... Lionel Coin Bank, Lionel Coin Bank. I've never save your money, life, save your money. <laughs> in my life, seen that that must have been a fucking local thing or something. I don't know. No, um, it was. If you watch Nickelodeon, that all in the two thousand. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, okay, what is Drew Gulak doing out here with MDK? I don't know. That's the oh. shocking part to me, I'm like, I don't Drew think Gulak. he would want to be now. anywhere near these. Yeah, because real life, I mean, not like real life, but storyline, kayfabe for longest time, Drew Gulak and Nick Gage were like super enemies. So 
This I, is interesting. In CZW, anyway, of course. But thing changes in MWA. I guess so. Okay. Uh, very. I can't. I'm shocked. The Samoan Dynasty took a loss here. Did they have a problem with hey. this? Um. Okay. Jimmy Uso. It says. Um. Technically, Jay Uso took the pin. Yeah. I booked it as Fatu taking the pin because Jimmy and Jay would not take the pin. Oh. So you fucking so, lied to us. <laughs> fuck it. I'll change it right here, motherfucker. I'm just, you got a problem with it. I'm just kidding. Uh, just for Bauer. So, okay. So I figured I figured they would not like taking a pin from these guys. So or losing. Um, also, um, Joey Janela smoking, grabbing gasoline. Be careful with that, bud. That's dangerous. Yeah. So nothing <laughs> came from that, huh? Okay. No, I was just like showing how reckless they are. Gotcha. All right. Cool. Sixty-five for this. I'm. I'm pretty happy with that, you know, for a hardcore, like, kind of six-person match. Like, yeah, I'm cool with it. Yeah. Immediately following this match, we cut to backstage, and we see Brock Lesnar walking through the back as he comes across Daniel Bryan, who's watching a monitor, confused at the sight of Drew Gulak with Team MDK. Brock stops and looks at him and the monitor. Looks like you need to keep your house in order, bud. Daniel Bryan gets startled and stares at Brock as he walks away, smirking as Gulak keeps celebrating with MDK on the monitor. Hmm. Brock's the one smirking, by the way. Gotcha. So Daniel Bryan not even knowing what's going on. Hmm. In- okay, interesting. Mm-hmm. So obviously this could lead towards a MDK catch point 2.0 type deal, but... But then again, where where Gulak lie in that? We'll see, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Did he get involved because it was Dynasty? Did he get involved because he's friends with the Team MDK? Who knows? Hmm. Finally, this feud will come to an end. We have Will Ospreay versus the leader of the Psycho Killers, Tommaso Ciampa. This long-standing feud finally comes to an end with only one fall in this entire 30 minutes Iron Man match. Oh. Ultimo Dragon, who's ringside, tries to get involved early, but is met by the rest of the Psycho Killers, dragging him through the crowd, completely taking him out of the equation. No shenanigans here, folks. They fight all the, all around the ring and don't hold back at all, putting their bodies on the line, as even the cement beneath the outside mats gets exposed and used by both men. At the 25-minute mark, Will Osper hits a Stormbreaker, sealing the first pin as Ciampa valiantly continues to fight to even the score. The match ends as both men exchange blows, completely exhausted, until the two men are on their knees, slowly getting their next punch off. Hmm. Osprey drops after a punch, and Ciampa starts to go for the pin as the clock strikes the 30-minute mark, awarding Osprey the winner, 1-0. to zero. Wow. Segment rating of 76, Osprey with a 77, Ciampa with a 73. I can't be happy with this match. Yeah, no, these guys did fantastic work here uh, and have great chemistry, so that also helps it out. Um, that would probably help, yeah. Man, dude, Osprey getting the win over Ciampa. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's big. That's a, that's a huge win. What's up? This is a slow build, and I think that's what really helped this match up. Oh, yeah, because yeah, it's long. Yeah, because that's what Ciampa's strong suit is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. Uh, very, yeah, very well Will books. Ospreay has defeated Psycho Killers. We'll see where he goes. Yeah, he beat them all, didn't he? He did, one yeah. by one. Yes. Wow, that's impressive. Okay. Well, Ospreay back to the Dragons really helping him, you know. All right, we cut to backstage again where CM Punk is being interviewed, asking about his match tonight when Marty Skrull and PCO approach him. Skrull says, hey, Punk, we worked pretty well together last week. If you ever need some friends, you know where to find us. Skrull leaves him a business card as he walks out for his upcoming Ultimate X match. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. I, I did forget they did team up and they had good chemistry together teaming up. Mm, um, something happening here. 81. Skrull struggled going off script. Interesting. Usually he does well. But... PCO did fine. <laughs> oh, I didn't even book him on anything. Oh, okay. well, he was there. He was there. He All right, did. folks, it Sorry. is time for the TEW's first ever Ultimate X match for the Mayhem Television title. The four men stand in the ring looking at the Mayhem Television Championship hanging above them. Suddenly, Zack Sabre Jr. darts for the pole to climb as the match gets underway. 
This match saw huge spots as Brian Cage power bombs Marty Skrull as he went along the wire. Walter chopping Zack Sabre Jr. out of midair. And even Marty Skrull cracking Walter over the head with his umbrella. Mm. The match comes to an end when Brian Cage is hanging from the wires about to grab the title. When ZSJ, Zack Sabre Jr. from the same rope gets behind Cage and puts a chokehold on him with his legs. Oh. Skrull tries to dive onto Zack Sabre Jr. to knock him off, but is intercepted by a Walter Chop, who hadn't noticed Zack Sabre Jr. above him. CSJ secures the titles and stands atop a pole, celebrating as Walter storms off in anger. Back to slam. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, man. So Crazy Zach match. Sabre Jr., Getting the win. CSJ. Very Catch good. Catch point man. 2.0 gets their first title. That This is a pretty big night for them. Heck yeah. yeah. Confusing That's, night, but big night. Yeah, they've had a lot of happenings. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, Walter Walter did outperform everybody, but, I mean, everybody was really close, so it's not like. It was a really good match. Yeah, no, that was a great match. I, I can't know. believe how well this did. Like, all of these guys are usually, like, 60s. Except for ZSJ, he's, like, usually a little higher. My score might be a little higher, but damn, that's awesome. I'm happy. I'm very happy. Yeah. yeah. All they needed was an Ultimate X match. Mm-hmm. Oh, second new champion, by the way. Second new champion tonight. Second new champion. Two title changes. And yet another long-standing feud match. A lot of feuds ended here tonight, folks. We have Okada versus Andrade. Okada meets Andrade at Eddie Kingston in the ring, where the two leave it all in the ring. Ultimately, Okada secures the win after two consecutive Rainmakers. Earns Okada the three count. Mm. Back to back count. Two. Damn. Mm-hmm. Can't believe how low that score is from Andrade, but thankfully the segment pulled through. 77. Another great match tonight. Yep, definitely held up. I got to wonder what's up with Andrade, because that's lower than it should be. Yeah. I I expected to see yeah, I expected to see Okada get the uh get the get the ending win here for this feud. Makes sense. You can tell he's it destined say... for some big stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense for the sixty two, like I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean it's still it's, it's not like match. it's not like horrible, but I I no, see what you no. mean. It's, it's just it seems like it's low enough to where it would say something. Yeah. All right, following that match, we cut to Sammy Callahan in the locker room with Ty Valkyrie and Brian Cage, who are preparing to be ringside with Callahan for his match. So Sammy Callahan stops them and says that this is his chance to prove he's the best in the world. He wants to make sure nobody doubts that. Hmm. Okay. So he's telling his allies that he's going to run the solo. Brian Cage is even willing to be out there, even though he just got beat up in that Ultimate X match. Very valiant of him. This does not sound like a good move. It does not sound like oh. something that Sammy should do here. Hey, man, he's got to prove he's the best in the world. Um, Look at that note that you got up there, that Sammy uh, got a new catchphrase, and oh. it's going to boost his abilities on the microphone for a while. Oh, man. Yeah. I got to figure out what, what his catchphrase is. You um, need to, well, you don't have to do I, it on the spot. but I'm the best in the world. <laughs> oh, I'm sure CM Punk's gonna fucking love that. Oh, God. He's gonna throw a hissy fit next In the main event, Sam McCallahan, the current champion, versus Brock Lesnar versus CM Punk. This fast paced match saw all three men trying to hit their finishers in the early minutes. Sam McCallahan seemed determined to stay in the fight, despite Punk and Lesnar appearing to wrestle on a whole different level than him. At the 10 minute mark, Brock Lesnar manages to German suplex CM Punk over the guardrail before hitting a vicious spear onto Sammy Callahan at ringside. Mm. CM Punk goes to get back into the ring, but is tripped by a fan. What? Brock rolls Sammy Callahan Ooh. into the ring and hits an F5 onto Sammy Callahan, oh. pinning him to become the new Midwest heavyweight champion. <laughs> I'm surprised that Brock won. I, I am not surprised. I, I saw this one coming. Sammy messed up. He should have... He should have had his his crew out there. Um, really good main event. I think Brock's a pretty good. Cho- I think any of these guys would be a good choice to get the win. Obviously, but well, the yeah. number one draft pick is our champion. Yeah, I didn't think. Okay, look, I thought Sammy would lose the title, but I didn't think Brock would win. 
Hey, I don't well, think a lot of right. people did. Look at their look at all their in rings. They're like all even. Punk's like one behind, but yeah. like they all did how, really well. Okay, so how does Edge go forties? A punk who hasn't who hasn't done anything in a while is seventy four. It's punk, man. It's punk. So Staying no questions edge. about how CM Punk lost? No. Well, no? of course the fan. Who was that fan? Yeah, just some fan, no big deal, fan. whatever. It's just a fan. So there's so, another segment. Man, MWA <laughs> needs to get their fans, you know, in check here. Well, it was a great show, you know. Well, yeah. that was the main event. No, nothing else to see here. All right, moving on. Rock Lesnar has won the Midwest Heavyweight Championship. Confetti begins to fall in the ring as Lesnar stands tall as a new champion. Meanwhile, CM Punk looks pissed at ringside as he looks for the fan that tripped him. Taya Valkyrie is seen tending to Sammy Callahan at ringside, dressed exactly like the fan that tripped CM Punk. Mm. Meanwhile, Lesnar has a piece of confetti land on him. As he looks closer at it, he can see it has Okada's face on it. It's an Okada buck. Okada appears at the top of the ramp as Brock Lesnar stares before the camera fades to black. Hmm. So Taya was the fan. I guess Mm -hmm. maybe. At least she looked like the fan. She was the fan. She was the fan. I I would like it would be hilarious if like CM Punk attacked her and like she just coincidentally was looking like the fan (laughs) completely (laughs) innocent. That would be hilarious. Uh, So okay. The worst time he's done something like So okay. So it looks like we got two programs spawning out of this. We got Brock and Okada. And possibly CM Punk and Sammy, Sammy maybe maybe Taya. Yes. Who knows? We'll see. Oh uh, yeah, we uh, can look forward to uh, Okada versus Lesnar in the future, and Punk versus Callahan in the future. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, it'll be in the off season. And look at that, um, Sammy so- Callah- Callahan benefited from that hot get phrase that he got. Hey, he is the best. He was in the like world. on the ground, going, eh, "I'm the best, <laughs> I'm the best <laughs> in the world." <laughs> After taking an F five. <laughs> That's the movie. Well, oh, oh, Ty is coddling him. <laughs> yeah. Well, 89 segment rating. Pretty freaking strong start or finish to the show I there. think your show was a guy named. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. Ooh. I, okay. I will agree. Right. Your show was slightly better than Ring of Honors by only 1%. Yeah. Yeah. By 1%. Yeah. Yeah. So but, much better. Yeah. Uh, That's so bullshit. good show here. Uh, so what? Everything so, on the card was good. So it sounds like I don't know if Luke was didn't. Uh, did you not like uh, Brock winning the title? You just didn't expect it. Which one? I didn't. Ex- no, I followed Brock winning the title. I just thought out of okay. the three guys in that match, he wouldn't. Gotcha. Okay, so you were surprised by it. Gotcha. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What about you, Tyler? Brock you, had to get the title at some and to get his win back on Sam Miguel and. Yeah. Just make that, sure he shows up, Gordon. Now, oh, yeah. I not think, a I think, well, he he has given you a problem, just a different, not a not showing right. up problem. That's yeah. where I think this could be interesting. I don't think Brock's going to want to lose. So whenever yeah. you decide you want to have him drop that title, I think you might have to. Make sure submissions. to fill them up before you yeah. put them in the program of Lesnar. Yeah, it's going to have to be somebody really high. So. He's never gonna lose, guys. I mean, that's that's also a possibility. <laughs> Have him losing like a three way then. That oh, that probably pissed him off even more. But, yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, he's not he gonna lose, guys. <laughs> Just there you go. S- spoiler: <laughs> Brock Lesnar will never lose. <laughs> all right, the eternal I'm champion. Who your speech is going to? So you had all of your titles change hands tonight. Every single title has changed hands. Wow. Yeah. The last race, Ooh, please. We'll see what Andrade. Oh, not too it seems concerned. Seems with your speech, at least for now. Hmm. Junior is pleased. All right. All right. So we start on the Iron Show, where we have, of course, in Slam tradition, we have a pre-show battle royal. Mm-hmm. Of course. In which Chad Gable was the one who got the win this time around. Whoa! What? Whoa! And the other Shorty members G. of the final four are Nick Jackson, mm-hmm. one half of the Dynamic Duels champions, Montez Ford, and the debuting Sonya Deville. Oh, almost got that first one. And Nick Jackson was the final elimination. 
The one who got the most eliminations was Tyler Bate. Okay. You're telling me Jordan Grace didn't make the final four. I see you had her in there. <laughs> she didn't get to the fi- the end of it? Come on now. <laughs> She'd be power lifting all them sons of bitches out of there. <laughs> she got though. German suplex out of the ring by Chad Gable. <laughs> oh, there you go. There it is. Uh, yeah, that is a good segment for uh, Battle Royal, though. 67, pretty decent. And a match that I'm glad I put on the pre-show. Smart. Beck yep. Ryder defeated Orange Cassidy in 11 minutes and 23 seconds by pinfall after Kurt Hawkins interfered and hit and hit uh, Orange Cassidy in the head with a crutch. Oh, payback. Yep. Yeah. All right. So we got we got Orange Cassidy getting his getting his head caved in. I like it. Training of 56. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, good move, good move putting this on the pre-show. It's smart, smart. Yeah, yeah, The show begins with The Rock coming out to the ring and as he hypes up every match on the main part of tonight's show and explains what they're all about. And then he introduces his um, unjuvie, a live performance of Wanted, Dead or Alive. There you go. So is, you... is The Rock on guitar? <laughs> yes, he's actually guitar. part of the band. Hell yeah. Wow, okay. That's a pretty big move there. Slam going all out. Fucking Bon Jovi. Yeah, 81. Awesome. And Angle got the crowd hotter and got the show off to a strong start. That's pretty How good it not? Start. Yeah, that's good. Except for Jordan and about well. that good heat and decent wrestling, Jimmy Havoc was the one who got the win oh, in this right. ladder match. Took out. Uh, Become the first ever Slam Intercontinental Champion. Dang it! I thought Dang. it was gonna be Bailey. I thought it was gonna be Bailey. And Bailey had a good showing. She grabbed uh, Jordan Devlin and gave him a belt. Bailey the belly onto one of the ladders. Oh, there it is. Good man. Parents yeah. watched horrified. Yeah, no, your your uh, individual ratings were really good, except for Jordan, but um. Yeah, that's a that's a bummer that the crowd didn't like the ladder match there. You would have had a really good rating. I looked into it to make sure the content risk was low, and basically it showed that there was no issue with ladder matches. It was under regular type instead of hardcore type, so I don't hmm. understand. Yeah. Live and learn, I guess. Dang. Yeah, and then following that, we had a tag team, Sue Young and Tessa Blanchard. Defeated Mia Yim and Allie in 12 minutes and 53 seconds. And Sue Young pinned Allie out after spraying the red mist in her fit. Oh. Oh. The deadly. The deadly red mist. Mm-hmm. Well, Do not want that in your face. Yeah. At least it's good to see Tessa getting some more wins, though. So that's a, that's a plus. Sue Young doing better than everyone else in this match is very surprising. Yeah. Everybody did pretty decent, though. There's no, like, any yeah. stragglers. Nobody was really far down, so that's good. I just think Tessa would be higher than everyone else, like, no matter what. True. I agree, yeah. Uh, segment 66, though, not, not bad. I mean, that's the perfect rating, I think, for Ward in this segment with uh, Sue oh. Young in there. The... Oh, it's a sign. Yeah. <laughs> Sue Young and Testa beat down Allie and Mia Yim, but then the lights go out. Lights come back on, and Rosemary stands in the ring staring down Sue Young. Tessa goes to attack Rosemary, but the undead bride stops. Sue Young and Tessa walk away while Rosemary keeps staring at them. So, oh. so she has been summoned. Yep. Mm, the demon bunny is back. Yeah, I wonder how uh, Allie's going to feel. wonder how Allie's going to feel about this. I guess, uh... Oh. All right, all right. And then okay. following that, and about that great heat and good wrestling, Pac defeated Bandito in 15 minutes and 30 seconds by submit. Hmm. Really good rating there. 77. Really good rating. Now, see, you could have used this as that segment to put Bandito over. 
But I understand. Yeah, you probably you wanted Pac to get his revenge. So, well, I guess. Yep. Hold on. Yeah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Plus, it happened at the last minute. True. Yep. Didn't want to rebook everything. But good for Pac. He gets a nice win, and the match was good. Yeah. Cesaro defeated Biggie in 14 minutes and 33 seconds by pinfall after hitting him with the neutralizer. Aw, oh, man. Yeah. That was a good match. Yeah, 71. And look at their individual performances, 65 and 67, but they got a 71. So, yeah, that that, uh, that went very well. So that's uh, on, pro- Biggie. probably Big E's best match. I'm just saying, you know, he, he pulls out all the stops here for slam. Just he saying. represents well. Yeah, I think so. He even had an MWA shirt when he entered in the oh. whole match. Wow. Thank you, Biggie. Look at this guy. And Xavier Woods was in the crowd holding a sign. Mm. Hey. Oh. Hey now, hey now, you didn't book you didn't. I guess he's not going to be. Yeah, for too, Woods. Nope, too late. He's you, he's not going to be at MWA tonight. <laughs> oh, no, I booked Big E in the world title match. Oh, you screwed me again, Tigers. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Big E replaced CM Punk. Yeah. <laughs> About to have fantastic heat and good wrestling. Chris Jericho defeated Cody 12 minutes and 49 seconds by a pinfall with a Judas effect after hitting Cody with a low blow. Judas in my mind. Wow. So 72, and it said they didn't click. So, man, that that's a really high score for not clicking. I'm just going to say that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I get the no clicking, and my people do like 40 segment ratings. <laughs> So, oh great, cool. That's a that's a big win for Jericho and a big match for Ibushi. So I think both guys benefited from this. That's pretty good. Yeah, I actually thought Ibushi was gonna win. Yeah. So the this feud isn't over yet. Oh, yeah, I was about to say. Oh. So this is still going. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. And Ooh. in the co-main event, and about that had great heat and good wrestling. Oscar defeated Sasha Banks in a submission match, fifteen minutes and three seconds with the Oscar lock. Oh, dang. Wow. He avenges her friends. I see this. Yeah, and 75, fantastic. I mean, I, I assume this match was going to be really good, and it was. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Sasha Banks was a decent amount lower, not a whole lot lower than good. Oscar, but that's... Good, good. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's understandable, great. I guess. Yeah, no, that's a great... Yeah, putting these two in a submission match makes a lot of sense, too. That's good yeah. booking, good booking. I like it. Let's see if the main event can follow up this. I think so. Oh! Yes, it can. And about to have fantastic heat and great wrestling, McIntyre defeated Alistair oh. 14 minutes and 53 no. seconds by pinfall with a Claymore and makes his fourth defense of the King of wow. Slam title. Alistair, no! Yeah, man, I was... Oh, look at that. They have good history, uh, good chemistry, too. That's awesome. Yep. Um, I wanted King Alistair. Yeah, I thought I was I was thinking that we were going to get a new champ. So okay, I mean I'm, I don't hate it at all. I, I mean Drew's great. No, no. I'm just a little surprised, which is nothing wrong with that at all. The 78. These guys both did good. We knew they would. Yep. Cool. Well, great job. Great job with Alistair there. Getting uh getting a good chance, but falling right at the end. At the end of the day, Drew just was the better man. I like it. 77. Oh. Not bad at all. Look at that. Good show. Very good. Yeah. So, Huge crowd attendance. Oh, yeah. 35K. Yep. That, that might have been close to a sellout, at least, if not a sellout. I think that is a sellout. All right. What was your worst segment? The uh, ladder match, somehow. Yeah. That's and that would have been, and the ladder match would have been good, too, if it wasn't for the weird product product yeah. stuff with the yeah because everybody did good in it except for devil but he's yep. a he's a little bit lower down so that's expected i guess yeah i'd say the rating makes sense yeah yeah no i, I overall I, I do agree but who so what'd you guys think of the show uh, i think good. i think it was very good i think i i think it's a pretty big bummer that the ladder match got hindered but because i think if that would have been a normal rating like it probably would have been in the either the high sixties or low seventies. Who knows? If maybe that maybe. match had happened on like my show, yeah, it would have been higher. Oh yeah, that would have been yeah much yeah. higher. Um, I think that would have put you up in the eighty category. Maybe maybe seventy nine or eighty. 
if that would have got uh, boosted up. But I mean, again, as far as the booking goes, I mean, I I like everything. You got you got Jericho getting the win. That makes sense. You got Cesaro beating the the guy coming in from the other company. Obviously, that's going to go down. But yeah, uh, I like that. No, I like that. Yeah, no. oh, you didn't like that. <laughs> I like the Pac and Bandito. I like, uh, Rosemary came back. Yeah, Rosemary showed back up. Oscar and Banks is good, of course. In the main event, uh, can't go wrong with that. Tell Devlin to step it up. <laughs> is that an option? Like, do better? Yeah, yeah, you can. Oh. Oh. Well, you can do that. Criticized. Told Criticized. that they can do better. <laughs> it's true, though. Okay. McIntyre, oh. also. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Didn't wow. seem too concerned with speech, at least for now. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, decision. So let's see. Slam. Let's go slam first here. Uh, show rating 77. 35, yeah, you got your sellout, the 35,000. And pay per view buy rate of 0. 0.48. Because uh, Slam did go back to direct TV on this one. So you got yeah. 241,000 buys. So good stuff there. Good stuff there. We'll break it down, see if it's higher than before. Let's do uh, MWA. Another sellout. We have two pay-per-view sellouts here. Buy rate of 3.16. <laughs> Holy Ew. shit balls. Great job, man. Fuck that's, it. that's huge. 1.5 million buys. Hell man, yeah. That's a that's monster number right there. I, that's, I don't even remember your last one, but that's got to be way higher. Um, then Ring of Honor. Uh, we got a, another sellout, three sellouts, 77. Uh, pay-per-view buy rate of 0. 0.49, 248,000 buys. Pretty good there. Um, yeah, over, I mean, say what you will. Say what you will, Warden. This is a pretty good uh, pretty good competition here. I know it's not a three, but still. Yeah, it's a pretty good main event scene. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> and then, oh, no sellout. I fucking ruined it. Oh. Uh, uh, CZW did not, the only company not to sell out. Uh, we did have 43,000, though, so I'm happy about that. Uh, 84 with a 3.06, 1.5, also million buys. Not quite as high as MWA in the buy rate, but I think I'm a little, I'm happy with that. Killed him with show rating. I am happy with, yeah, show rating the 84. What this injury is, he will not miss any dates with a broken cheek. Wow. A fractured, fractured cheek. Or a oh. move from Naito. Yeah, okay, yeah, well, that's good for uh, Tanahashi. So we have begun our October month. We have closed out the season. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I, I don't want to go into so I have a decision. Should I click it or not worry about it? You got to look at it. You got to look, look at it because this is our season yeah. finale. I'm sure it's something stupid. Oh, my God. I got Arn oh Anderson. Oh, God, is he dead? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Oh my God, on Anderson oh, on painkillers. The only way we can end the season. More oh druggies. <laughs> shit! Stern warning had a small negative, negative impact. Well, that's good. And then Undertaker. I I know it's I know it's painkillers. It was painkillers oh, before. <laughs> Abuse of painkillers. Yes. My world fucking champion now. <laughs> oh, All right. You want to send the rehab? What did I do last time? Uh, stern warning. Oh. Well, now he's getting a I fine. Got a Lugan. Unhappy. Well, then don't oh. fucking do painkillers, you piece of shit. He's 55 years old, man. Let him be. That's true. <laughs> I shouldn't get mad at him. You're right. That is it for CZW in this first season. Um, we drafted. Uh, I think the draft went really well. I really planned on drafting for high in ring performers. Um, and then we went in there, we started with tame stories and we finished, I think with a lot of crazy ones. So I am extremely, extremely happy with the way the whole season went all four months or three, four months, three months. How many months did we do? Four months. Four. That's crazy. Four. Four. That's crazy. We did four months of this guys in like almost every week. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, I can't be more happy with. I know a lot of people may be surprised with Undertaker as world champ, but he's the biggest guy in wrestling, I think. One of the biggest guys in wrestling right now, so I figured it'd be best to get him while we while he's still wrestling before he retires. But we'll see where we go from here. I uh I think this pay per view was obviously the best one we had, and I look forward to 
the future shows and see where CCW goes from here on out. I hope you guys did enjoy. Uh, Luke, mm-hmm. Luke, how did you feel about uh, this month in the season as a whole? This month is interesting because I got some pretty high ratings and I also got some pretty low ratings. Yeah, I think your big but... fucking takeaway is you got to book 20 minute matches. That's it. like you will the be doing so that... much better. You'll be doing so much better. That's the thing, though. I'll do that, but then I'll say, oh, yeah, this person shouldn't go that long. Fuck then I'll say, oh, this person should have gone Fuck longer. Him, like, wait, Bob Humphrey doesn't give a shit. I got I Undertaker eight minutes, man. You see how long he went? Man, he went way past I, this I time. Just had, I just had Lesnar and Punk go 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, try, so I, go try it out. So try it out. We'll see what happens. But... You know what? Next, next time I book Edge in, or Tom Punk in a 20-minute match, I'll just let it go. Yeah. yeah. You want to know what I learned about Ring of Honor? Oh, like God. in seriousness? Oh, no, it's not even oh, bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, what's up? It doesn't matter how shitty they do, as long as their main event is decent, they'll get a good score. Yeah. That, like, that's the that biggest thing. Exactly for what me. it is. True. True. Yeah, if you got a bad yeah, main event, can, you're going to have a bad do show. horrible, but. Yeah, as long as our main event and, like, we have one or two good segments. Like, you could just then book. Be fine. You could just book Moxley and Orton for, like, a year. And yeah. You'd have, like, 80s every yeah, single month. Well, hey, at least you got Moxley to carry your company. Yeah, there we go. Moxley being our savior. But um, is, yeah. this month, I think I did decent. I did okay. Not good, but not that bad. But um, pay-per-view, I'm really happy with, considering a lot of my things uh, haven't been going to plan. But um, yeah, I'm happy with this. All right, uh, Tigers. What? Uh, how'd you feel about everything? Basically, I I was surprised the way the season went. Uh, I had a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. I've had some matches I didn't think that were good that end up being great. I, if I went back to that draft episode and thought that my strongest feud up to this point would be Chris Jericho and Bailey. <laughs> I, I I just couldn't imagine it. But People wanted to see it. It happened. That's something they haven't seen before. Great. Um, yeah. I made the most out of things like parking hurt. I had some weird storyline. Tiger Tiger getting poisoned or you know, the whole Sue <laughs> Young thing. Mm-hmm. Your very first uh, show was just centered around backstage and catering. <laughs> the, food, yeah. the food show. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Fun fact, Slam was originally going to be on the Food Network. Oh, God. <laughs> that that, that would have been a different uh, season for sure. Just call it Food It would have just been Guy Fieri ripping into them. Oh, I'd hey, watch that. I hear he gets good ratings, so <laughs> might as well. Might as well. I'm going to take your ass to Flavortown. Yeah. <laughs> like, Slam has been weird. Cause I would just book show by show. Gotcha. It was really fun. Well, good. Um, yeah, this has been a, a fun surpri- day. Surprisingly, um, All Out ended up being my best show. Yeah, that, that was a, yeah, that was a great show, too. I just had a lot of fun. I'm surprised how great the women's wrestling in my show was. Yeah. On your show and your show only. Yes, that's a very, <laughs> very key, key uh, phrase there. Yeah, we did not get much success elsewhere with our women. What are you talking about? Well, okay, okay. Hey, he has the second best women's division. You, he does. <laughs> he does indeed. All right, so Warden, how, how did you feel about your show and your season here? <sighs> We've come a long way, folks. We've come a long way from the 30s. That we started off in. <laughs> yeah. That we is, are that is here. Very, very we true. are getting the most views weekly. Getting the most buys in our pay-per-views. We have the best champion in wrestling with Brock Lesnar. Mm. Easily be any of the other company's champions. Easily. He would never beat um, Undertaker. Moxley. He would not beat Moxley, no. He has beat Undertaker. 
He and, killed the street, bro. And he also <laughs> killed Moxley. <laughs> yeah, he beat Both. Ambrose, not Moxley. And not beat Drew McIntyre, though. Oh, uh, that's a good point. That. That's a good point. Sister that we're true, friends. Yes. We're friends. Hey, we're, we're that is true. <laughs> okay. Oh, where was I? Uh, uh, yeah, Brock Lesnar's the best. Been a lot of, <laughs> a lot of highs and lows for our company. Um, we lost Randy Orton. Um, that was a big loss for us, but I yeah. think it benefited us in the end. I thought you were going to um, say that was a big high for us, but okay. <laughs> I mean, it did benefit us. But <laughs> yeah. Um, it worked out for you. Yeah, looking back, I think I should have drafted more um, WWE main roster guys. I think that would have benefited me. But uh, I think I'm doing well working with what I have. Um, the product I have is a little tricky at times, but uh, I'm happy. I'm happy I have it. I think it allows me to be creative, and uh, I'm excited to go into this off season. I think we're going to come back with some bigger and better storylines. And uh, fuck Ring of Honor. And there's the final fuck <laughs> Ring of Honor. Yeah, no, I think for as far as MWA goes, uh, I think you were you were on the upward trend. Obviously, you were doing better, but I think Mr. Stone Cold, Mr. Uh, CM Punk has definitely propelled you past a lot of us. Um, those <laughs> signings have done you uh, wonders. So, yeah, Punk and Stone Cold. So congrats on that. And those were, I mean, those are, I mean, we could have signed those people too. One of us tried. To sign one of those people. So, I mean, hey, it's all I just love all you. that MWA end up having such a good underdog. Yeah. Like our first show yeah, to sure. now. Yeah. Right. It's, it's hard to argue. It's hard to say, hey, this person won the season. But I would, it comes okay. down to the I guess sections. I won, like, fan attendance. Like, yeah. 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 You've got okay. a lot of fan. Tigress won attendance. I won, like, most weekly shows. Most which what? surprises me weekly shows i don't know it was like like early week, on you dominated show okay here's here's my review okay tigers won the first half of the season bomber won the second over, half of the season wait over with show ratings Tigers show not show ratings czw first. didn't win any show ratings so i didn't do anything for show ratings the second half of the season you were Oh, sorry, sorry. I thought you meant I thought you meant TV ratings. Yes, show ratings. Yes, yes. Sorry, I got the wrong. We got mixed up there. Yes. Show ratings. CZW show ratings. started. Yeah, did very well in the show ratings. The overall ratings. Yes. Yeah, not TV um, though. Buy rates. It definitely comes or like views. It definitely comes down between Ring of Honor and myself. Yeah. Definitely have the most viewers. Um. So it all depends on what you really want to look at. Yeah. I think end of the day, yeah, show ratings Gordon. matter most. Yeah, Warden won a seven of the TV things. I won eight. Oh, well, there you go. Wow. No, it's it's close between us. Well, then I guess yeah, if you look at it that way. But I, I want to know what the. Uh, I mean, I'm probably gonna put this in the intro and outro, of course, too. But uh, I, we want to hear from you guys. What? Uh, who do you? If you had to determine a winner of the four of us. Um, for our first season, because it is a war after all. You know, obviously, I think, I think we all did good. We all did great, and definitely in certain aspects. But what, uh, what was your favorite company? What was your favorite moments? What was your favorite everything? Just let us know, um, you know, what you like best. And Where's Cam know. Popplestone with the long-ass comments? Yeah, Cam Popplestone <laughs> is going to come in and talk about how he hates Undertaker, so I'm sure I fucking, <laughs> I'm sure I did great for him. <laughs> so let's take a look at our final pay-per-view breakdown for season one right here september 2020 starting off with czw we have a pay-per-view buy rate of 3.06 which is up from 2.97 the previous month the viewers were 1.531 million which is when i say viewers that's how many people bought the pay-per-view uh, live attendance was 43,736, also up. And then the show rating of 84, up from an 81 last month. All four categories. CZW, believe it or not, has improved in from month to month. Every single month, it's gotten better. Uh, so CZW caps off the season with big numbers in every single category. Then we go to Ring of Honor, which... The, it, on a smaller network like Fight, the buy rate is not going to be as high, but he got a 0 0.49, which is up from last month, 0 0.45. That's good. Also improving in the buy rate there with two 
uh, two, uh, 248,022 buys. Live attendance with a sellout at 21,000. And a show rating tied last month. Last month was a 77, and this month also a 77. So Ring of Honor's four pay-per-views, we had a 73, 75, 77, 77. Keeping it consistent, keeping it good over in Ring of Honor with their Death Before Dishonor pay-per-view here. Overall, good good, good uh, showing. Everything improved, all four categories again. Even the number of live attendants, uh, which was a sellout, improved. So good stuff for Ring of Honor. Then we got MWA, the highest pay-per-view buy rate of 3.16. And then the, the buyers, uh, 1,581,705. Very, very strong number there. Top CZW in both of those categories there. But believe it or not, we're both down from last month. Last month, MWA had a 3.21 in 1.6 million. So didn't go down a lot, but it just dipped just just a little bit compared to last month. Uh, sell out here for 20,562 live attendance. A smaller arena than last month, so again, a little bit lower. But it's a sellout. You can't, can't argue with sellout. Um, and show rating, 78, which... I, I, these are all good numbers from MWA, but also dipped compared to last month's pay-per-view. Um, so 78 rating last month got an 80. That was MWA's first ever 80 uh, score in any of their shows. So while, yes, MWA did win in the buy rates and views, it, it fell down just a hair in um, all categories. So still fantastic outing, uh, great performance here from MWA, but just not quite as good as last month's pay-per-view. Um, and then we go to Slam, who did increase in most of the numbers. Not all, but most. Here we go. We got a buy rate of 0.48, and look at that. Slam has jumped back to DirecTV for the network. They tried Dish last month and got a very bad buy rate. 0.19 was the buy rate on their last month's pay-per-view. It was in the UK, um, so maybe that had something to do with it. But uh, bounce back here in the in the U.S. with 0.48, so that went up quite a bit. The buy rate got two uh, 241,729 uh, buyers, which is pretty solid. A little less than Ring of Honor, actually, but way up from last month, which was a 95,000. Live attendance, big number here, 35,446. That is a sellout. So they probably could have done a much bigger number. But either way, when you sell out Arena, that looks pretty freaking good. Um, and that was more than last month's pay-per-view, so which was 33000 And then you go to the show rating. Dip down just a little bit. Um, 77 here. Last month's pay-per-view was an 80. The second month's pay-per-view was an 80. And their first month's pay-per-view was a 76. So... Uh, the order there went 76, 80, 80, and then finished with a 77. So down just a little bit in the uh, the show rating category there. But overall, Slam increased in three of the four categories, so you can't get mad at that. Slam is making the rise back up to where they were earlier in the season, which was pretty much dominating. Slam pretty much dominated the whole first, first major portion of this uh, season, so they are making a rise back up. But guys, that is it. That is your last pay-per-view ratings breakdown for season one. I hope you enjoyed uh, following along with the numbers. I hope you follow along with these breakdowns because I try to put in as much information as I can and display it as cleanly as I possibly can. Even though I wing these and just ramble it, I hope you've enjoyed. So that's it for your final September pay-per-view ratings breakdown. That's it. <clears throat> season one. Season one has wrapped up. We had four awesome pay-per-views from, we talked about it kind of in the closing moments there. Um, we really want to hear what you guys think, how the series went, what you liked, what you didn't like for season two, when it starts up, what do you want to see different? What, what different elements do you want to see one less company? Do you want to see, we can't do one more company. So don't say add a fifth company. We can't do that. It's not possible. The, the this was so difficult to do four. We definitely can't handle five. So for anybody throwing that out there, that's not possible. I'm so sorry if you do want it. It's just not likely and it's not going to happen. Um, this is already way too much work with four. Um, but 
I think the shows all went good. I think everybody did a fantastic job from when you look all the way through the, the whole four months, when you look at our draft, all the way through the first pay-per-view, the first shows, all the way through, man, we made so much progress. Look at MWA. They got a 30, their first show, and he finished with an awesome pay-per-view. They got a 3.16 or whatever it was. Sorry, I know you just watched the breakdown, but uh, it was a great buy rate. What a huge jump. For if, any, if you get any takeaway out of the series as far as who won or who lost or whatever, even if you don't think MWA won, they made the biggest jump by far and improved their product by far from the start. They get that award if you're giving away awards right away. Um, uh, just closing thoughts here. Just we, I, we already gave them on the actual shows, but as far as the series as a whole, um, I can't, I cannot thank you guys enough. Thank you so much for tuning in, interacting with us, telling us what you liked, what you didn't like. And we want to hear, again, like I said, this pay-per-view too, these shows too. Um, but you guys, may, we didn't anticipate anything like this, any kind of, uh, I don't want to say we built a community or anything, but Job Radio has been a community, which, by the way, join our Discord if you haven't already, because in the off season we're going to talk about stuff. Join the Job Radio Discord, hang out, meet new friends. Just, it's, it's a fun time. Um, but I, I, I am overwhelmed by how, how well this came off. I think, um, I think it went great. It's just, I, I'm so proud of this. I, I'm, I, I can't say it enough. I'm really proud of everybody from Luke to Warden to Tigris. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for putting up with the crazy scheduling and, and taking time at, at the beginning, we were doing like our first recording was like six hours just to get that first episode. And we, we got we got a little more efficient down the way. But, man, we put so much time into this. And you guys, the, the ones who have been actually on the show and sacrificed that time to like record and everything. Thank, thank you guys so much. Um, I'm so glad I had you guys on. You guys all did great. Even if, even if Luke, God damn it, even if you didn't show up every time, I understand there, there's a thing called life out there. And I know you're, you know, you're, you're going to learn about that a little bit more as you get older, man. But, um, thank you for, you know, babysitting your brother and doing the shows and everything. And Tigers had issues at the, the final. We didn't get, we didn't record this on our normal time because she had some issues that happened at her home and everything. And, made the time to do it the next day warden always he's got a crazy schedule like i do so anytime we can record that's a that's a big deal that's a big challenge but i, I don't want to sit here and be like oh, you know be weird and stuff but thank you guys so so much uh i had a lot of fun and it sounds like you guys did too and those of you guys that watched awesome thank you so much uh i'm excited to see where we go um tune into the off season we're going to be tweeting about it. Each individual person is going to be tweeting about their own stuff too. So it's not just going to be job or radio. Make sure you follow everybody's company profiles too, on our profiles, uh, accounts too. So that's it guys. Um, season one, I say, in my opinion, two thumbs up. I hope you guys agree. If you don't, I mean, that's understandable. Not everybody likes it and that's fine, but I really hope you guys did enjoy it. And please don't be, don't be super sad. Cause I saw some people like, Oh, I can't believe this is going to end. Don't be sad. Don't be sad. I think we pr produced a lot of content for, for a good while there and don't worry. Season two will happen. Um, and I, I, I can't say when, I don't know exactly when yet, but, um, it will. So there you go. Um, that's it guys. I'm getting out of here. This video has definitely been long enough, but it's the finale. So I hope it was worth it. Hope it was worth your time. And, if you haven't already, I feel weird about saying it, but subscribe to us on YouTube as well. Obviously, I feel like you probably are if you've watched this many videos uh, of ours, but um, you'll see when the next content comes out because there's going to be more content coming out. That's not just TEW. There's going to be different things here along the way that I hope you guys do enjoy those as well. And if not, that's fine. If you come for just TEW, that's okay too. But uh, that's it. I know I'm looking around a lot because... I, I don't go into the, I never go into the things prepared. I don't, I just literally just say the, whatever comes to my off the top of my head. And I know I dart my eyes around, but that's it. I feel weird saying it, but we'll see you guys on the next video. I don't know when it is, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be coming back at some point season two. 
I hope you guys really did enjoy season one. Thank you very much. Bye.